All right, what's up, everybody? So today we're going to be introducing the sixth axiom uh, from our list for ZFC. It's called the subset axiom, and it's going to allow us to define things like this, like the set of all x that belong to the natural numbers, such that, uh, let's say, x is prime. I mean, so far we don't have the natural numbers, but suppose we have the natural numbers already. We don't have anything that allows us to define something like this, define a subset with, of elements with a certain property. Um, and it says the following. For any set A, there is a subset B of A whose members are the members of A that satisfy a certain given condition, like being prime in the previous example. All right, so that's how I write it like that. So the members of B are the ones that are in A and satisfy a given condition. All right, so it's very important that this is, is only to define subsets of something that we have already. So the set A has to be built, or we have to know that it exists already, and then from it, we take a subset of all the things that satisfy a certain property. We cannot take a set of all x's such that x satisfies property. That we cannot do. And we know an example of this already. We, we saw an example of this. Because if we could do that, we could define a set of all x's such that x doesn't belong to itself. Remember, we, we call this guy the set B in a previous video, and we show that this allows, this uh, gives us a contradiction. We cannot do this. We can only consider uh, the elements that satisfy a certain property, that, but also that belong to a given set. Okay, so we just define a subset of something that we have already um, satisfy a certain property. So this is how we get around uh, this contradiction. So for notation, this is how we're going to write this. The set B here is going to be written as a set of all x's in A such that x satisfies the given condition, right? So that's how we write that. Um, for instance, like the one we had before was x in the natural numbers such that x is prime. All right, so that's one example. Another example, y in the natural numbers such that y is even. All right, um, so those are two good examples. Um, there are uh, two useful examples that the one we mentioned in the last video. We can define the intersection this way. So suppose we have two sets, A and B, and we want to find, define the intersection of A intersection B. How do we do this? Well, we can say uh, this is a set of all x's that belong to A which satisfy the property that they also belong to B. So x belongs to B, right? So a so, uh, subset axiom tells us that this exists. We can also define A minus B. You know what that means? This is a set of all x's that belong to A but that not, do not belong to B. So that's x minus B. What if we wanted to define the intersection of an infinite collection of sets? All right, so now suppose we have A, it's a collection of sets, a set of sets, like we had in the previous video, and we want to define the intersection of A. All right, the big intersection of A. You guys remember what that was? It was a set of all the thing, all the elements that belong to all the sets inside A. Though the definition that we gave last time is all the x's such that for every A in little a in A, x belongs to little a, right? But this definition is not using the subset action, right? So here we're just taking all the x's and where are we taking them from? Um, because to use the subset axiom, you have to be, be able to take them from somewhere. So where are we taking these guys from? Any ideas? One thing we can do is to define this. I mean, the, sub the intersection is always a subset of the union of A. Right? Because if, a mem if something belongs to all members of A, it belongs to some member of A. Unless A is empty, that's a weird case. Let's not get, in, get into it. 
So the intersection, every element of the intersection belongs to the union. And we know how to define the union because we have the union axiom. All right, so we have the union already. So now we can define the intersection. Intersection of A is defined to be the set of all x's that belong to the union of A such that, and then for every A in A, x belongs to A. Okay, so what kind of condition can we use in here? So let me, let's start with an example of a condition and then you tell me if we can use it or not. Suppose I want to define, I want to define the set, I'm going to call it, uh, let's call it A. It's going to be the set of all numbers, let's call it, uh, well, X in the natural numbers such that X cannot be defined, defined in less than 20 words. I mean, there are uh, so many words in the English language. So with 20 words, we can define so many numbers. I guess it's a lot of sentences we can write with 20 words, but it's still a finite number. Uh, so some numbers you just cannot define in less than 20 words, right? Because only finitely many you will be able to define in less than 20 words. All right, so what if we do then do, then take, so let uh, n be the least element of a. Okay, so this is the least number that cannot be defined in less than 20 words. So n, let's write, let's write that down. So n is the least number, let's, let's even write natural number that cannot be defined in less than 20 words. Okay, so that's the definition of n that we have so far. And this is a very precise definition of n, right? So there is a least number that cannot be defined in 20 words. So let's see how many words do we, do we use to define n. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. We use 14 words to define n. So, so n does not belong to a because it can be defined with less than 20 words. You only need 14 words to define n. But then we contradict uh, the definition of n, which was to be the least element of a. So it has to be in a, because that's how we chose it. But now uh, we're saying it's not in a because it can be defined in less than 20 words. So this is a contradiction. And this contradiction comes because the property that we're using here to apply our subset axiom uh, is not very mathematical, right? Cannot be defined in less than 20 words. Uh, what does it really mean? I mean, we need to understand what it means to be defined. And, I don't know, maybe it's a notion that we can be defined about what it means to be defined, but I guess not if we will get a contradiction here. So we cannot just put any property up here. It has to be a mathematical property. How are we going to do that? Well, the answer to what kind of conditions can we use is any condition that can be written as a first order formula in the vocabulary that we started with, the one that only contains the belongs symbol. All right, so, so we can only use formal formulas here for conditions. Um, I'm going to make another video about what are these uh, first order formulas but as we said before, it's everything that you can write with uh, belongs and all these logical symbols and that makes mathematical sense. Um, mathematical, you have to define the rules to see what it means to make mathematical sense. But once you see the rules, you're going to notice, okay, yes, it's what makes sense. And this one that we have right here is not a first order formula. That cannot be written as a first order formula, otherwise we will get this contradiction. So we can now write the subset axiom more formally as follows. For each first order formula psi of x, that is a string of symbols um, <coughs> making it a well-formed formula, we have an instance of the subset axiom that says the following. So given a set A, we can define the subset of A called B, whose members are exactly those that belong to A and satisfy the formula psi, all right? So given a formula psi, we have an instance of the subset axiom, but for each different formula we can write, 
we have another instance of the subset axiom and that's why we call it a scheme because it actually contains many axioms inside one for each formula that you can write see you guys next time